The source turns its focus now to homelessness in the region. The last point in time homeless count in Niagara was 2018, when 625 homeless were identified. This week, the process to update that count began with Niagara Counts 2021. Director of Homeless Services, Kathy Cousins, joins us. Kathy, why so long in between counts? Why so long is directly related to the pandemic we are currently experiencing. It is normally a biannual count that we perform. However, um, the schedule would have put us in March of 2020, which was right at the cusp in the beginning of the pandemic. And so our funders who require us to perform this count um, did suggest that everybody wait a year just for safety and to really understand it was the beginning of the pandemic. We really didn't know what we were walking into at that point. You started the count yesterday morning. It's a 24-hour count. Physically, what actually gets done to count? The count is a two-part process. There's the physical count, which started yesterday morning and lasts only 24 hours. Hence the reference to a point-in-time count. Um, so never, it's never going to be a complete count because it's only who you see on that day. The secondary opportunity is we also do a survey of 27 questions in an effort to better understand some demographics and some other root causes around homelessness. That piece we can continue to do and it continues as we speak. Do you take that count from yesterday and is there any statistical variations, a plus or minus kind of thing that you do with that? We will put the data um, up against the 2016 and the 2018 data and try to understand what the differences are and whether those differences are associated with the pandemic or whether those differences are associated with other elements that we've gone through in the last three years now. You're assuming that perhaps the pandemic may skew results possibly? The pandemic does have certain implications on the homelessness population. One of which is um, you will see, and I'm sure Niagara um, you've noticed as well, you see an increase in encampments and individuals choosing to sleep rough or maybe to sleep on a couch as opposed to being more open and in the public arena um, because you, the resources aren't there for them. Um, when you consider they don't have access to restaurants and washrooms and things in the same way. Um, also many, and we saw this in H1N1, become very concerned about the pandemic and find the shelters um, perhaps not as safe because of the congregate environment. So it is more difficult to interact and to find as many uh, individuals who are willing to participate in the survey. This is part of a national strategy, correct? It's actually part of the national strategy. So we upload all of our information to our federal government when we're complete, but it's also part of the provincial strategy and we provide all our information to them as well. When you look at the survey, what types of questions are asked in that survey and why? 17 elements that are mandatory from our federal and provincial funders. And then we add some local questions as well, based on agencies who participate in a steering committee, if there's particular elements that they'd look to understand more deeply. Um, they are quite a range of questions and they will be simple demographics to understand age and education. Um, and then there's broader questions to understand what services have you leveraged, whether they're mental health or addiction services, what services do you feel you need and one that I um, always find interesting is, what was the cause of your last loss of housing? Um, it's a broad range of results. Uh, we ask questions about what do you consider your home community? Are you from Niagara? How long have you been in Niagara? So it's a really robust set of questions. Um, we also work really closely with the Fort Erie Friendship Center and the Niagara Regional Friendship Center. And um, they actually had some interest in adding some questions. So we added four questions to respond more accurately to the Indigenous homeless uh, challenges in Niagara. Indigenous individuals do have a higher incidence of homelessness nationally, provincially. Um, and in Niagara, in our 2018 count, it was 24%. That's a high number. Um, so we did want to work really closely with them and they participated as part of our boots on the ground in order to better understand the Indigenous component of our homeless population. 